Okay, so the last video was a troubleshooting guide. Um, I wanted it to be for a broad spectrum of devices. What it turned out to be was more geared towards Windows. It, it's just the trouble child. So this time I wanna be more specific to MacBook. Uh, so essentially today, we're gonna teach you how to be a Naruto hand script Mac Jutsu yeah, you'll see, you'll understand. So MacBooks, though they do run really well, they are efficient, uh, they do encounter problems. Uh, anybody with a MacBook knows that this is the case. One of the first things you can do is, yes, power it off, power it back on again. Um, that, that tends to, I had a MacBook Air, would not work, would not work. Uh, remove the battery, put it back in, boot it up just fine. Um, I still use it today. Really? All right. No, kitty. She's gotta have all the attention. All right, so booting into safe mode. This is a very useful technique if uh, your progress bar isn't loading all the way, if you're encountering some issues, if you installed something and now it's not running correctly, uh, what you're going to do is power completely off and then whenever you're powering back on, um, you're going to hold down the shift key. So just keep the shift key held down and it'll boot into safe mode. It basically just runs the essentials. It doesn't run any applications, it doesn't run any extensions, it doesn't run any graphics, it just, it's straight vanilla mode. That way you can uninstall a previously installed application or if you just ran out of space and you tried to boot it back up and it's not booting because it doesn't have enough space, you can go in, get rid of some space, move some stuff to the cloud, kind of organize a little bit. And then what you'll do to get out of safe mode is just restart your computer. Um, all you gotta do is power it off, power it back on, and you're back into regular mode. All right, the next one is non-volatile random access memory, or NVRAM. Uh, NVRAM is your video, your, uh, your audio, your playback issues. Um, if you try to connect to a projector and now it's not working or it won't connect to a projector, all you're simply gonna do is this is where the Naruto Jutsu comes out. You're going to power off your uh, Mac and then you're going to uh, power it on and you're going to hold Option, Command, P, and R and hold that down. Um, you'll hear two chimes. You'll hear one chime and then when you hear another chime, it's been reset. Um, that usually solves uh, any video or audio or playback issues. Um, so that's, that's pretty useful. Pretty easy to do. You just got to figure it out. Uh, the next issue is it's uh, running slow. So why is my Mac running slow? It's because you filled it full of stuff and you didn't back things up to the cloud and you didn't delete things. Uh, no, uh, if you're running a workstation, which a lot of people with Macs or Apple do, um, you usually use it for a workstation and sometimes you can just get overloaded with things uh, and run into too many processes and you don't even realize you're running some of these processes. Um, that you don't even need. So um, like in Windows, you have a task manager. Uh, in Mac, you have a couple different options for different types of task managers. One is called your activity monitor. Uh, you can go up and search in the bar and type in activity monitor. It'll pull it up. Um, this will show you all the processes running and what resources it's using and how much. If it's like just spiking out, uh, you can say, what is that? Uh, if you look over in the user tab and it doesn't say root, and it's not vital to what you're doing, disable it. Jack, do you want to be in that too? Oh, stretch. Oh, stretch. Oh, this is my life. Okay, so um, you have an application that's hung. Uh, a lot of us have had this problem. Uh, some of my video editing stuff uh, that I've used in the past uh, used a lot of resources. I have a wimpy little MacBook and it just doesn't, it doesn't got the power. Uh, so it hangs sometimes and I have to force quit it. I'll go into the application icon. I'll click on it and bring up the menu and just hit force quit. Are you sure? Yes. If that doesn't work, get at your uh, Naruto jit uh, Jitsu Jutsu. And I don't watch Naruto. I watched it in middle school like a little bit, but I remember the cool uh, hand tutting. 
Uh, anyways, um, you hold Control, Shift, and Escape, and that'll while it's powered on, obviously, uh, and that'll bring up uh, force quit options, and you'll select the application that you want to force quit and agree, and then force quit it. The next thing we're going to go on to is your SMC, your System Management Control Reset. Um, this is for power related issues. Uh, your USB ports aren't working correctly, your trackpad isn't working correctly, your fans are too loud, your Wi-Fi cart, uh, anything power related, uh, just go ahead and just reset that. How you do this is you're going to power it off, you're going to hold shift control option power. You're going to hold that for half a second, uh, your little light, on if you, if you got it plugged in, the little LED light is going to go orange, green, orange. That's a good indicator that it was reset. If you think that it's not a software related issue or it's kind of suggesting that it's a hardware related issue, you've done everything else and it still kind of boots, it still kind of runs, but it's just not doing what you need it to and you think it's probably uh, hardware in your Mac, you're going to power off your device. You're going to unhook all external devices. And then when you're powering on, you're going to hold down the D key and you're going to keep holding it down until an option menu pops up for language. You're going to select language that is preferred and then, <laughs> and then it's going to take a couple minutes because it's going to do a diagnostic on your uh, MacBook. Once it does a diagnostic, if it finds something, it's going to give you a reference code. You'll take that reference code, and if you got Apple Care or you have an Apple Center near you, take that to an Apple certified technician, and they'll fix your problem, replace your whole laptop, probably. Or you can look up the reference code yourself, and you can start fixing your own issues. That's what this is for, so that we can fix our issues. Sometimes we don't need other people to fix something that we can do. It's I'm about to fix you. Really? Okay, next thing is antivirus. Macs are notorious for being a little on the safer side. My boss um, at my second job, he, super smart guy. Anytime he talks, I listen. Uh, sometimes he gets too many Red Bulls in him and he talks a lot. I still listen. He told me uh, when, you know, everything was coming out, you know, the PC boom and stuff like that. Uh, Windows took up 97% of the market and Mac only took up, Apple only took up like 3%. So when you're looking to attack some something, the bigger target is better. Uh, the smaller target, why would I go after something so tiny when I can definitely hit the broad side of a barn? Which makes sense, but now it's to the point where a, a lot of people have Mac. It's, it's kind of half and half for the amount of people I see with Windows versus Mac. But still, uh, the amount of procedures that Mac takes to mitigate risk is kind of awesome. You can even see this for yourself. When you go into um, security and privacy tab in your settings and under general, below at the bottom, you'll see uh, what can be installed. It's either uh, from the App Store or from the App Store and identified developers. Uh, if somebody messes up after their identified developer, Apple kicks them. The other day, there was a big story about a bunch of malware in Apple. They noticed it and started working towards it. Um, it's just uh, it's just good. Um, the antivirus, uh, the malware um, security, it, it's, it's a little better for the average user. It's a little better safe in mind. Um, and even after uh, the security and privacy app store, app store developer, um, if it gets past that, it still has to hit some background procedures that are run. Uh, it's called XProtect and your MRT, Malware Removal Tool. Anyways, these procedures run in the background and they kind of catch up, you know, whatever sneaks past. Um, you can also install a uh, antivirus yourself. Malwarebytes, I use it. Uh, it's free. Um, I'm not promoting it, anything. I'm just throwing a name out there if you find something that's better. I encourage you to do your own research. Every year I look up, you know, um, some of the top five searches for best antiviruses or best this, or, you know, I do my own research and I dig down and I find what's comfortable for me, what's best for me. 
I always read the worst reviews first, uh, uh, but I stick to the average reviews mostly to see what people say for pros and cons. And Malwarebytes, I run it maybe once a month on my Mac, whereas on my Windows computer, I run an antivirus once a week. Yeah. Anyways, you can do a free scan. Um, it's pretty quick. If that doesn't work and something's still hinky, uh, just power off and do the safe boot and uninstall whatever application you installed previously and that'll usually solve the, the problem. Now, if that didn't solve the problem and you want to dig down deep and find out why your Mac crashed, there are crash logs. I highly encourage you to learn about logs. Logs tell you everything. Logs don't lie. Go into user, go into your folder, Go into libraries, find crash logs and diagnostic report. Read through these. This will let you know what your Mac is doing behind the scenes. And you can read down and get a timestamp of a crash log and why it crashed. And then you just search that and it'll let you know, like, this is why it crashed. This is the application that you're running whenever it crashed. Or this is what you were doing when it crashed. Or this is what the Mac decided to flip out and do and crash. But yeah, anyways, um, always start easiest to hardest when troubleshooting. You don't want to dig through log files and get reference codes and blah, 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 only to find out all you had to do is power it off and power it back on. If you are in the tech world uh, and you troubleshoot, you know, semi-often, create a troubleshooting list and always list it easiest to hardest so that you can reference it. And I promise you, you will solve more problems a lot more quickly and learn more by just referencing that. Um, so same thing with PC, same thing with Mac, same thing with your Android, same thing with your iPhone, same, same thing with all devices. When troubleshooting, easiest to hardest. And Google and YouTube are your best friends. Thank you for coming back to For the Nerds. Uh, George and I love this. We're growing every day in this and we're excited. We love this. So thank you guys for the positive feedback. It's mostly just close friends and family right now, but other people are starting to trickle in and it's great. It The positive feedback is awesome. This is for you guys. This is your channel. So you guys determine what happens. So um, yeah, on the nerds.